Porter makes too many mistakes lunging forward like that. Boom, hit with an uppercut. Yup, you know what this is, man. This is your favorite channel, man, CTB. This is Chant Up Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. I'm about to check your chin with this one, man. Hey, I enjoyed today, man. Today was a great night of boxing, man. I was right on most of my fights. Of course, the main event of today, man, which was Erickson Lubin versus Sebastian Fondora. I was wrong on that pick, man, but I enjoyed the fight. None of the less boxing has been boxing has locked me in again, man. I'm not gonna lie. Whenever I feel like I'm a little bit tired of the sport, I'm tired of the corruption in the sport. I get a great fight like this that bring me right back to the love of boxing, man. This was a great back and forth drama fight, man. I enjoy every second of the fight, even though my pick was wrong. But I kind of called it though. I did say. That I called for Erickson Lubin to knock out Fandor, um, Fandor in the mid rounds, in the fifth or the sixth round. He was close to doing that. He was very close to doing that. But I also said the longer the fight goes, the worse for Lubin it would have got, man. Because the title of this show, man, it, it says it all, bro. You can't teach 6 5, bro. You, you really can't teach 6 5. You can't teach that chin that he got. And you can't teach the motor that Fondora has, bro. Get ready for it, fans. I'm telling you, yo, American fight fans, get ready for it. The, the bus is coming. The train is coming. The casual train is coming. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be all kind of casual fans. Our Latino brothers, man. There's going to be a lot of Latino brothers coming out of the woodworks, man. And they're going to be calling your favorite fighter, whether it's Terrence Crawford, whether it's Earl Spence when they move up, whether it's Charlo Castano winning, whether it's Boots in the future when he decides to finally move up, because these I think these guys are the future pay per view fight. I think that is going to be the future pay per view fight of all fights. But they are going to be saying that they are ducking Fondora, bro. It's, it is coming. It's coming without a doubt. You can bet your last two Bitcoin on it. I'm telling you, it is coming. You can bet your last two Dogecoin on it. Excuse me, Bitcoin is a little more expensive, but you bet your last two Dogecoin on that. I guarantee you they come in, they're going to say that your favorite fighter is afraid to fight Sebastian, bro. It is coming. And I'm going to be honest, if I am in any one of those fighters' corner, if I am the manager, promoter of any one of those guys, I am considering avoiding the guy not saying i would because like i said he's going to be a pay-per-view star and the money is going to speak to you and hey you got to chase greatness bro and you got to chase that bag but he wouldn't be the top of my list and it's not because he has a really impressive skill set man he's shown a lot of vulnerabilities he's shown more vulnerabilities in this fight than he did against garcia but he's shown a vulnerability that he we knew he had we knew he get touched a lot but he got touched by a real puncher in this fight. And while he did get dropped down, he did take a knee. You can't teach 6'5", bro. Let's put it in perspective for you real quick. This guy is 6'5", fighting at 154. Deontay Wilder is 6'7", bro. Two inches taller than this guy. He's a heavyweight. This guy is fighting a heavy... He's fighting at heavyweight height. With, I would say, a lightweight motor and a chin like Margarito Prime, like a prime margarita. It's hard to beat a fighter like that. He, his skill set, while well, his skill set is pretty much just to overwhelm you with punches, his uppercuts are crisp, and he doesn't fight his height, and he's vulnerable. His chin is up there sometimes. He takes a great body shot, man. Lubin was laying some body shots on him, and it didn't really seem to bother him as much as that. Them head shots were hurting them towards the middle of the rounds. But you got to get in there for those shots, man. You have no choice to be able to get in there for them fight for them shots. Because he's six fucking five. So you have to get in there in the fire to get your shots to the head off. So, so like I'm gonna say it again. Prepare yourselves. It's coming. The Fendora hype train is already I mean, it's already on the tracks, bro. It's already on the tracks. It's picking up steam right now. Just think about it this way. 
It's going to be like David Benavidez, but on steroids. It's going to be like David Benavidez, but on like a motherfucking mushroom for Mario. It's going to be a train like you've never seen before, but only because of the fighters that's around that division. Because the Terrence Crawfords are there. Because the Earl Spence are down there. Because Charlo's about to unify. That is the recipe for a megaphone that you would not believe. And they are going to ring it out, man. Trust me. And I'm going to say it again, bro. Any one of those guys will have their hands full with fighting Fondora. But like I said, it's not because it's just his skill set. It's, man, you really can't teach 6'5", bro. It's in that motor, bro. But I'm going to watch some film on it. I'm going to see how I think both all of those guys will, you know, engage a fight with Fondora and see what would be the game plan for fighting the Fondora. I will say this, though. I mean, I was talking to my boy Mon earlier tonight, and, and I told him, because you know, he's the Earl Spence fan out the group. I told him, while I do think both Crawford and Spence beat Fondora, I'm going to go ahead and say that now. I do think he beats them. Excuse me, I do think they beat him, but it's a tall task. They kind of, I kind of think they will beat him the same way I thought Lubin would win tonight. Like I, I know the threat level of it, I know it, but I'm still going to say they will beat Fundora. But I will say it is a tall task for both of them. No pun intended. It is a tall task for both of them, only because, like I said, man, six five. Earl Spence is five ten. Think about this, guys. He's five ten. And he fights while Earl Spence does have different gears and he can fight in and out of range. The in and out of range that Earl Spence fight in is not Fondora range. And then where Earl Spence does sit in the pocket, he's going to have to deal with Fondora's range. Same with Crawford. Then Crawford can't move and circle and pivot and how you set and set traps for you. But those traps have to be set. But you're still going to have to get in that fire, man, to get your shots off. Because you're going to have to punch up to get to Fondora's chin. Them body shots alone is not going to stop Fondora. So, I'm interested to see... Man, I'm interested to see what PBC does. Just, just, those, just throw this recording the video. I'm going to talk about it more about it tomorrow. But I'm interested in see how PBC do. They moved him along pretty quickly. Let's think about it. He pretty much jumped up in class in Fort Garcia. And then... In the back-to-back -back fight, went for Eric Salubin. This fight was a make-or-break fight for both. Well, not make-or-break, but this fight was a a fight to break the mold for both of those guys. That's why I, I was, man, I knew it was going to happen this way. I knew whoever won that fight would have been such a drama fight that it would have blew them into stardom. And I'm telling you, man, the hype train is coming. For Charlo, this is for Charlo real quick. Jamel Charlo. This pie was the best case scenario for him. I'm going to tell you why. Because if he does happen to unify his titles and he does become undisputed at 154, he will be in need of an opponent, man. Because people was already asking him to fight his friend and stablemate in Earl Spence where Earl Spence moved up. Because think about it, he really didn't have any opponents in the wing waiting. Either he had to move up and step on his brother's toes with some of the big fights that his brother wants. Or he was going to have to fight a stubble mate and brother to get a big pay-per-view fight in Earl Spence. He already beat Lubin. It would have been a great fight in my opinion. Because I, like I said in the video, I thought Lubin was green when they fought. I think the Lubin now was better than the Lubin then. But this means I, I would I would still pick him to beat Lubin again. I mean, in my honest opinion. And that wasn't really a highly paper like a high pay-per-view fight. That fight probably would have been in Showtime. But this fight right here, this Fondora fight, that is a pay-per-view fight, bro. Already. Already. So I'm interested to see what PBC does. Do they do they push him again another level up? Cause Charlo, like I said, Charlo, man, it couldn't be a better better disguise fight unless he would have fought Terrence Crawford. I think Terrence Crawford and possibly Triple G are the only fights close to Charlo's weight class right now that will be a bigger fight than Fundara gonna be. I'm telling you, man, the casual fans is coming, y'all. Y'all might think I'm selling crazy right now. That's because y'all either y'all new to boxing and haven't seen this story before. But I'm telling you, the hype train is coming. But with that being said, man, this is your favorite channel, man, CTB. This is Chin Tuck Boxing. I'm your boy Jay Slay.
Peace. Yo, you just got chin check. Peace.